Yes, sir. Walking again. Hello, everyone. Since we're doing our
choose to live together. This time, sorry, this time we could see a similar result, like Aborig uh, like Aboriginal spatial separation of different ethnic groups. It seems like dividing the urban plan to several parts for different and permeable. However, compared to the last example, this one is no longer a passive acceptance so that we can actually see and feel how society change and influence our life and the urban appearance. So then I would say the society elements can actually influence the architecture. Thank you, Jeff. That's a really good point. So as a representative of working class, Quinny, what is your opinion about this? Thank you. Um, well, at working, as working class people, our life was pretty hard during 19th century because of the urbanization. As you can see, the population growth is already overwhelmed the urban capacity. So we were forced to crowd it in the city and, and live in slums. However, the rich is they moved to the suburban, which is regarded as magnet of spatial beauty by whole world. And this is the back to back house we lived before. As you can see, we only had one toilet for all of us to use. So you can imagine how dirty and smelly it was. So the living quality became the main inequality for us. And this is how I think the society influenced our social life. Although there has been some slum coherence program, but this is criticized by most of people, including Anguti. And I am strongly agree with Anguti because I think things should be planned for us to have a better life, but not just destroy what we live and ask us to get out of here. But fortunately, we have some urban planning models such as the Garden City and the Radiant City, but they remain some problems. For, for example, the rent in Garden City was too high for us to offer, and the low ones land in the Radiant City was pretty dangerous and scary for us. And but it still influenced some urban planning design, for example, the public housing. And as you can see, the public housing is pretty much the same with the Radiant City one, but just with some improvement with security and privacy. But it could fail in some, um, but it could fail because of some social issues such as the financial and the public making. Um, but fortunately, oh sorry, but unfortunately, this the number of the public housing is decreasing recently because the government no longer support this kind of program. But we have some community housing recently. As you can see, it's pretty different from the Radiant City one. We have churches and schools within the community, and the architect will consult with us for what we want and what we need in the community. And we also have some services like the small business and training program. So this kind of housing really emphasizes the sense of community. So we're really enjoying this. So I think they could influence each other. Well, when you look at the urbanized area, they are treated as cities, and they are the center of state, which people gather around and form society around. What if there's no proper infrastructure? What if there's no aesthetic architecture that shapes cities' landscape? City will be city wouldn't be crowded and offices wouldn't be located there. And people wouldn't choose to live in a high rise apartment constructed around the city, which are really expensive. So this is how architecture would shape and influence the society. Well on the other hand, society influenced architecture as much as it is done by architecture. As Jack discussed, Sunnybank is a clear representation of how society influences surroundings. Another example, Chinatown. It's constructed in 42 Valley, Brisbane. It is show one part of Australia's ethnic city and established due to increase in Chinese population. And also indigenous society. They need a place to exhibit their culture and important social history. So this, this kind of museum is built to represent their society. And also for public, we need to consider where parks are built and buildings will be built so that the city will have a healthier environment. And therefore, different types of society would need different types of architecture. And one architecture wouldn't be enough to satisfy everyone's needs. As 
Professor Ali stated, it is significant for people like a small minority of group to get an inspiring place for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I enjoyed your use of, I know this is the same comment I gave last time, but um, you guys used your images well. I especially like the first diagrams. Um, sometimes, you know, especially when you're just um, uh, talking about more theoretical things, like what Jack's topic was, um, it's good to include diagrams like that to conceptualise it, so it's good to see, because not everyone does that. And also, uh, this is the first time I've seen everyone have an individual microphone, so I'm very <laughs> impressed by the craft work as well. Is that, um, what type of wire is that? For the design course. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, well, well it's, it's welding wire. Ah, I was very, I was impressed that I never had a microphone. I thought that's such attention to detail. Yeah. <laughs> so that impressed me. Okay, you guys, right, I'm ready for the questions. Well, they're ready for the questions, so you guys ask away. Uh, all right, I have a question for Jack. So you're talking about the specific uh, racial group as the Chinese having sunny bank shaping the uh, urban landscape. Uh, are you happy with the government doing at the moment, or you think there's more things for government to do, sort of like involving in this process? Um, I think that's the results of the Chinese choice. Sorry, can I borrow them? Because not only like Chinese, as you can see, the pink, the pink one represents the weak name. Weak name is, they are also like to live together. And the, and, the, and the red one, red part represent the Chinese because uh, I think all of the people like to live, live with the people who share the same cultural background that's easy for communication, that's easy for life and that's called, that's what called the concept uh, infernal bird which means all the people with the same background living together so that I think that's the result of the people's choice and people's choice influence the urban planning Thank you. Question number two. Yeah. You guys have a question? Um, yeah. Um, he talked about how indigenous people are like located in like, far away from urban society. Is there a plan or like how how to bring them closer to the to urban society? It may be more of a question for Emma because yeah. Yeah. you had to interject for a second. That's in this week's readings. <laughs> that's within this. That's kind of within this week's reading. But go ahead. So I should have like, done them then. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like the New Zealand I showed. Well, you guys remember. Um, so they exhibit their work there, and most of most of the museum is located in the city where people mostly stay, like go. So it's one of the ways to bring Aboriginal people closer to the city and closer to the public. And yeah. Would you think that that would be more of a way of showcasing their culture? Yeah. But it, perhaps it's not really a way of actually bringing them in because most Aboriginal people may not be able to afford to live inside this city near those museums yeah, where it may be too expensive. True. So it's in, it's not really possible for Aboriginal people to be closer to the society, the center of the society, but it's more like society going closer to the Aboriginal people. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Yeah. There is a public housing building in Sydney next to the Sydney Harbour Bridge, it's called Cyrus Building, or yeah, Cyrus or something. And that's a public housing project, so there may be Aboriginal people living there, and that's a way that government has brought them back 